Good afternoon, happy spring. According to the Chinese calendar, it is uh, time spring is alive. So I know it's still a little bit chilly, but uh, nevertheless, spring is knocking on our door. So, between seeing the patients, I want to have share with you something because I uh, haven't really had a chance to uh, say hello, talk to you all. In, in the air for a while, so I really want to share with you uh, some new thoughts, some new development. First of all, I just want to show you uh, a minute, one minute video tape. So this actually is the, a real video tape from the, uh, my colleague Dr. Kowayama who invented the egg freezing. And this actually is a very original um, uh, video which you show how the egg is being frozen. I think I want to just share share with you. This is in observation of 15 years of anniversary of New Hope Fertility Center Free the X, where the very few center in the, this country to start free the X. So I just want to share with you some video which we took in uh, 15 years ago, but really didn't change that much since then more and more uh, centers started to use the same technique, but not so much new development. So. Uh, let's take a look at the slide and the video. So this is a central well dish. That's where you do the egg freezing. This is a microscope. Now this photo looks a really very low tech, but that's actually where eventually find the freeze the egg, the revolution of the whole process. So this is a different kind of uh, concentration of cloud protectant, which you have very, very, very sticky a solution almost like uh, maple syrup, syrup. And uh, once the egg gets in this kind of medium, they start to shrink. You can see that's how we take the water out from the egg. It looks scary, but it's really a very good thing. Now the egg looks really uh, shrink, and this actually becomes a glass, and it will keep doing this again, again, and to um, basically to remove the water as much as we can. So you put a very high concentration concentration media, they are very sticky. As I said, it's like a maple syrup. You see the egg start to shrink. And this is how you start the first step of the egg freezing. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. And this is eventually you mix all the drops together. So the mediums are very well incorporated and the eggs are ready to be uh, cloud preserved. I can fast forward, this process is very much the same. So here is a vitrification. You see, you put the egg under this cloud top and the egg is removed from uh, this drop and then the dump into the liquid nitrogen, which is a, uh, minus uh, 190 degrees. Let's see if we can see the whole image. This is a very hands-on work. So that's why you just see the embryos have a very steady hand. They load it, they dump in the liquid nitrogen tank right away. Yeah, it looks very simple, not so much a high tech, but they are really revolutionized the whole egg free. So I would like to share this part of the information with you. As a matter of fact, I said that the technique didn't change for the last 15 years. Okay, so Egg freezing really revolutionized the whole field of human reproduction. Since then, we proposed the so-called embryo banking, and in 2004 and 2005, it was considered as a very strange idea to freeze the embryos, but now it's become the part of the routine. Today, I would like to discuss some new de development in our field. I would like to discuss about stem cells and what stem cell has anything to do to in, in the human fertility. Not so long ago, you may hear from my colleague, Dr. Murphy, discussed about ovarian rejuvenation. Basically, this is a wake-up call to wake up the ovaries and ovary to continue to produce the very remaining egg in ladies who 
has very limited ovarian reserve left. Now let me just give you a very uh, brief background information. This is an ovary, an ovary, color X. An X is a follicle, and the follicle can be seen on the ultrasound like a black dot. Okay. Some lady born with less number of eggs, or some lady depleting their eggs fast. So before 40 years old, they may run out of their theoretically they run out of their eggs, they undergo postmenopause. And this group of patients with a premature ovarian incompetence, P O I. Repeat it one more time. Premature ovarian incompetence. Also, other group of patients, the actually has not really undergone postmenopause, meaning they still produce some eggs once in a while. Could be one egg every two months, or even one egg every 40, 50 days. We typically call them, it's not a standard diagnosis word, but we call them with a low ovarian reserve. So this group of patients now, the only option you have is to give them different kinds of shots, injections, trying to make them more but usually almost all the time it doesn't work. Ovarian rejuvenation means that to wake up the ovaries, and there are many ways to wake up the ovary as you watch in Dr. Murphy's uh, lecture that you can do the mechanical um, puncture of the ovaries, reduce the, the physical pressure on the surface of the ovaries or many centers and developed by scientists in Japan to ingest some kind of gross factors or even the human blood plasma or platelets into the ovaries trying to wake up there. But there are many ways to wake up the ovaries. Another new development to wake up the ovaries, that's what I want to talk about today, is the stem cells. So, Stem cell is a new concept, but it's not so new, and I'm sure that most of our friends already know, patients know what stem cell. So stem cell, the definition of stem cell is that they are totipotent and they are immortal. Totipotent meaning that they can differentiate into any kind of cell types, including actually sperm and eggs, and secondly, Immortal, meaning that they can replicate again, 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 like a cancer cell never stop. Immortal. That's a stem cell. Now, usually with aging, we have less and less stem cells. That's why we stop growing. We have less and less stem cells in our skin. That's why I start to show the wrinkles. And less and less stem cells growing in, in the brain. That's why we start to think slowly. And uh, less and less stem cells start growing in our muscle in our bones, that's why we're starting to shrink if we don't exercise. Now, so you will say, where does my stem cell come from if you want to do something for my fertility? Now one of the cells, which you may notice that while every, every cell started to shrink with aging, one type of cell actually grow like crazy, that's what I said, with aging, is a fact. You know, we already you know everybody's starting to feel, not everybody, some, some of them feel like I'm getting old, my skin getting wrinkled, but one thing you always worry about, your belly getting bigger and bigger because you carry on more and more fat. So fat actually has the best quality of the, we call it stem cell-like stem cell. They are very much like stem cell, they're almost like stem cell because they replicate indefinitely and they grow more and more and that's the only cell which is not affected by aging. So we can select a cell from fat tissue, the medical term is called adipose cells. So adipose cells, where you get stem cells, there's a special word called adipose stem cells. For you, just to remember, very simple. I can, get a, I can get a stem cell from my fat, and the best part of the fat is from the belly because the fat from the belly, abdominal area, is called a white fat, has the best quality stem cells. While other part of the fat from your thigh, from other part of your body, is called a yellow fat. They don't carry that many stem cells. So that's how you can get a stem cell. Now, after I discussed it with you, for the adults, 
while we don't produce embryos, while we can't get a real embryonic stem cell, where we can get a stem cell from our belly, from our fat. Second, how to utilize this stem cell in two folds. I'm only talking about for the ladies. So first part of application of stem cell in the, for the patient with very thin endometrium, as we know, there are many, many stem cells in the endometrium. That's why every month, our endometrium going through the cyclic menses. Every time when you have a menses, you're losing this endometrium and the lining getting thinner. And then next month, they grow thick again. That's why the endometrium allow me to find the picture for you. There are lots of stem cells in the endometrium. So this is the endometrium. It works in the uterus, in this part, cells, endometrium. And this cell, every month, going through cyclic menses. For example, end of the year, and end of the day, they have a period, they bleeding, the lining getting thin. Then they regrow, getting thin again. So they have the stem cell like cells in the endometrium. Otherwise, endometrium cannot grow every month. They have stem cell. But for many, many reasons, some lady had this cell line damage. Or they may have lots of stem cells. They don't grow very thick lining like here. They may grow only to here. And this is usually very hard for them to get pregnant with thin lining. And for now, the only option is to have a urine surgery. So my colleagues and many doctors around the world are trying to use a little stem cell injected to the endometrium see how it goes, that stem cell for the endometrial thickness. And in collaboration with our colleagues at Stem Cell Lab, we can now start to consider off the service to the patient, even though it's not have a large bit of scientific proof. But when you don't have any other options, when you keep trying with the baby aspirin, when trying with the Viagra, by trying with the long-term use of the estrogen, but lining still not getting thick, and the surrogacy is really not your best option, then I think stem cell is something very safe to try. So we will collect the stem cell from your belly, and it will inject it into your endometrium, and then we'll follow up with the endometrium line. I think this is a very interesting subject, and we're recruiting the patient for this study. And if you find that you have a thin lining and you've been trying with everything else you can name, growth factor, neopogen, baby aspirin, uh, estrogen patch, Viagra, you name the lining still remain 6.5 or less, then we definitely can think about stem cell injection. Second, a very exciting development in stem cell, which is the, the ovary. As I said, when the lady with a very, very minimal number of the follicle left in the ovary, usually the ovary will be shut down, they stop making eggs. By injecting the stem cell into your ovaries, you will rejuvenate the ovary and start growing follicles. And many studies show this is the case. So we also going to offer some clinical application to see if you will benefit our patient. Again, if you had a period, if your last time had a period of the two, three years ago, you are not going to react. When you don't really have any other option, I really think this is the worst time to give it a try. So we're cutting your stem cells through transvaginal injection into your ovaries and see whether you can start to reju rejuvenate your ovaries and start producing more eggs. I will share with this information. If you are interested in know more, uh, give us a call and we can go over more details. So this is what I want to share with you today about that what part what possibly uh, application to have stem cells for female reproduction? In summary, we can get a stem cell like stem cell from our belly fat because this is the best source for the stem cell in adults. Number two, what can we do with stem cells? We can work on with two things. A, to improve the environment, to improve the endometrial environment for the implantation. If ovary is not the issue, but the endometrial cavity is the issue. Number two, we can inject these cells into the ovaries and using this stem cell to wake up your ovary to allow the very remaining eggs continue to grow out and that will treat the patient with a premature ovarian failure. What's the definition of premature ovarian failure or incompetence? A lady at the age of 40s, older or younger, and already stopped having a period for six months, one year, two years, three years, four years, or 
they have extremely low winning reserve, FSH around 25 to 75, and produce eggs irregularly, maybe once every two to three months. This is a group of patients we can discuss about the option of using self produced stem cell injection into ovary to improve the fertility. So please send us a question and we can continue the discussion. Take care. Bye.